In this uh, video, we will look at the fat digestion and absorption. In a uh, typical diet, uh, typical Western diet, 30 to 40 percent of the calories come from fat. More than 90 percent of the fat is in the form of triglycerides. Now, triglycerides have three long chain fatty acids that are attached to a glycerol framework, as we can see here in this uh, schematic. The dietary fatty acids uh, typically contain more than 12, often 16 to 20 carbons, uh, so they can be fairly long chain uh, fatty acids. Triglycerides are insoluble in water, and that is what makes the digestion and absorption of lipids different from the other macromolecules uh, such as uh, protein and carbohydrates. So let's consider lipid digestion starting from the mouth uh, and that is where the lingual lipase will begin the lipid digestion process. This may then continue in the stomach uh, due to the presence of gastric lipase. However, most of the lipid digestion takes place in the small intestine. The digestion of the large fat globules that contain the triglycerides begin in the duodenum by the action of the bile salts. These uh, fat globules are emulsified into smaller size fat droplets because of the interactions with the bile. As we can see in this figure, several small droplets are created and that increases the surface area of the droplets to allow the pancreatic lipase to further break down the triglycerides. The water-insoluble monoglycerides and free fatty acids combine in the lumen with the extra bile salts to form water-soluble micelles. Note that the micelles are water-soluble, but their interior has lipids, and that allows these micelles to move towards the epithelial cells, as we see in the next slide. So here we have a depiction of the epithelial cell of uh, villus uh, with the microvilli, and we also show micelles that are water-soluble now moving within the lumen, and these micelles moving within the microvilli, getting closer to the epithelial cell walls. Now, as the micelles approach the epithelial surface, the monoglyceride and uh, free fatty acids leave the micelle and enter the cell via passive diffusion through the lipid bilayer of the membrane. And this activity of the bile salts in creating micelles to allow the diffusion of free fatty acids and monoglycerides into the epithelial cells continue throughout the three segments of the small intestine, duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. Now, an interesting transformation again takes place where the monoglycerides and free fatty acids combine back to form triglycerides. And that happens because of the presence of endoplasmic reticulum, tubular-like structure that is present within the cells. And endoplasmic reticulum is rich in an enzyme called acyltransferase that helps formation of these triglyceride droplets. Upon the uh, formation of these uh, aggregated triglyceride droplets, they get then covered by a layer of a lipoprotein to form what is known as chylomicrons. As we see in this diagram, the chylomicrons are water-soluble. So the chylomicrons leave the cell by a process known as exocytosis, to enter the lacteal. Note that in comparison to the absorption of amino acids for proteins and monosaccharides for carbohydrates that enter the blood capillaries uh, from the epithelial cells of the villi, in case of the chylomicrons that contain lipids, they cannot enter the blood capillaries that offer a barrier to the chylomicrons. Instead, the lipid-containing chylomicrons move into 
the lacteals and then into the lymphatic system. So in summary, we have looked at the digestion and absorption of fats, mainly the triglycerides that are first broken down into monoglycerides and free fatty acids, which combine together along with the bile salts to form micelles. The micelles then allow the movement within the lumen to the walls of the epithelial cells of the villus, and that's where the transfer takes place of uh, monoglycerides and free fatty acids into the epithelial cell that combine together again to form triglycerides, and those triglyceride droplets are then covered by a lipoprotein forming the chylomicrons, and chylomicrons are the ones then that transfer into the lacteal and the blood supply.